Where's David? Oh, he's upstairs. He'll, he'll be down shortly. How did he react when you told him I'd returned? Oh, he's a strange child. He's loaded with intuition. He claims that he knew you were here and had seen you, and he went so far as having dreams about you. Oh, has he? Dreadful fantasies. The child has a difficult time distinguishing between reality and imagination. Well, some people have exactly the same problem. Laura, before we go inside, there's something I want to discuss with you. Well, if it concerns the past... No, it... it's about now, and the future, and David. You know, I didn't know what to expect from you, remembering the past, but now you seem so clear-sighted and willing to accept responsibilities. Well, you're still very adept at compliments. I do hope you're not going to suggest a reconciliation. No. What I want to say is that I'm responding to your plans. Oh. Well, I'm very glad to hear it. But I think maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. There may be some small obstacles. Such as? Well, Liz, for one. She's developed a very strong attachment for David. She's tried to assume your role and has tried to be mother to him. Well, I appreciate that very much. I don't see how it can possibly be an obstacle. After all, we, we both have the same objective, David's happiness. Well, I'm telling you this to prepare you, not for a conflict with Liz, but for understanding and perhaps a degree of patience. Well, I'm prepared for anything. Now, another thing. We weren't going to say anything about the past, but there's one item out of it that I do want to discuss. What's that? Burke Devlin. Oh, I see. He's back in town, you know. Yes, I know. I saw him. I knew he would manage that. Well, I tried to avoid him. But, unfortunately, we, we ran into each other accidentally this morning. He's come back in town to stir up that mess of ten years ago, you know. I know. He asked me where I stood on that. Oh, what did you tell him? Well, I gave him an evasive answer. Obviously, he's going to ask you to testify in his behalf, if there is another trial. Well, I'm sure of it. And would you testify? Roger, I've told you I have absolutely no intention of becoming involved in anything. You realize that such a trial would cause you to be looked upon as an unfit mother? I'm fully aware of that. And he'll put pressure on you? Well, I'll deal with it. In my own way. Now, are there any other obstacles? No, I think that's all. Liz can be dealt with fairly easily. Devlin will be very sticky, but I'm glad for once in our lives we see eye to eye. Oh, Vicky, there you are. Come here, I want you to meet someone. Of course. Laura, this is Victoria Winters, David's tutor and governess. Vicky, this is Mrs. Collins. How do you do, Mrs. Collins? Hello, Vicky. I'm very pleased to meet you. I've been looking forward to meeting you. And so has David. He's even gone to the extreme length of changing his shirt, brushing his hair, and washing his hands. Which is something reserved only for presidential visits. I'm honored. David, uh, Vicky, would you bring David down, please? His mother's anxious to see him. Right away. Nice girl. Yeah, she's something of a story unto herself. Well, I'm ready for the first obstacle. Well, it may not be as bad as it looks. downstairs. I don't want to see her. What do you mean you don't want to see her? Leave me alone. Oh, now you're not going to start all that again. Leave me alone. I thought we, we were through with all that. I thought you'd gotten over your nervousness. That's not it. David, I've never seen you so shy and bashful. I am not. Well, then I can't understand why you were hiding in the corner. 
I don't want to talk about it. Your mother's waiting. I don't care. She's very anxious to see you. I don't want to see her. She's very beautiful, David. Don't tell me. David, I'm sure you'll love her. I only talked to her for a few minutes, but I liked her very much. And I know that she, she loves you. How do you know? Well, when, when I told her how you, you changed your shirt and washed your hands, she seemed very happy. David, she's waiting downstairs. I hope you won't disappoint her. I don't know. Come on. Why do I feel so strange? I've explained that to you before. There's some other reason. You keep saying that, but it's really just because you're very shy. I don't want to go downstairs. David, if you don't go down, I'm sure that she's going to come up. I don't want her to come up. Well, then you better come downstairs. One way or another, you're going to meet your mother tonight. So you understand my reluctance. I've learned to understand a great deal and to tolerate much. There's no doubt that you've undergone a complete personality change. Much for the better. But what I can't get out of my mind is the image of the former you. Well, I wish you could erase it. I wish I could. Well, I'd like to help you if you'd let me. From the time you decided to renounce being a mother, I've tried to fill in, fill in that gap. And I can't tell you how very much I appreciate it. But I'm afraid I haven't been completely successful. David still knows the difference. Well, I'm here now to perform that function. It's the only thing I want from life. I must say that I'm very pleased with this newfound attitude. Of course, I've gotten very used to having David around. It won't be easy to see him go, but on the other hand, if it's the best thing for him, then I am for it. Will you stand next to me? If you want me to. Will you hold my hand? Yes, I will, you silly goose. I don't want to seem the judge, but everything depends on how the relationship between you and David develops and, and the sincerity of it. I need only this opportunity to prove myself. To love and be loved. David, this is your mother. David. Hello, David. David, go to your mother. What on earth is the matter with a child? I don't know. Perhaps he's just bashful. Vicky, go up and see what's the matter with him. All right. I can't understand this. He was so eager to see you. Now you're just being silly. No, I'm not. I know that lady downstairs isn't my mother. If that were true, don't you think that your father and your Aunt Elizabeth would know about it? Do you think they'd let her into the house and talk to her and not recognize her? Now, does that make sense? I don't care if it makes sense. She isn't my mother. You're just trying to hurt her feelings and make things hard for her. No, I'm not. I wouldn't do that for my real mother. You didn't even give her a chance to talk to you. You should have. She's very nice. She is? 
I think so. And she seems to love you. She does? David, if you'd come downstairs and talk to her for just a few minutes, you'd see for yourself. I'm not going downstairs again. What are you so afraid of? Her. I don't want to go near her. Why not? Because if I do, something terrible might happen. David, why should your mother do something terrible to you? I don't know. Well, what makes you think she'd want to do something terrible to you? I don't know. Miss Winters, I just get this funny, scary feeling. That funny, scary feeling is your imagination. Maybe. I don't know. David, your mother has looked forward to seeing you for such a long time. And you didn't make a very good first impression on her. I guess I didn't. But you can make it up to her. Go down to her, David. That's all she wants. I don't want to go downstairs. I don't. I don't. All right, calm down, David. Don't make me go downstairs. Please, Miss Winters. It scares me to go downstairs. Please. All right. I don't have to? Not if you're going to behave that way. I'll make some excuse to your mother. David's behavior. He tends to be unpredictable, Laura. Don't let it bother you. You don't have to make excuses for him. It's all right. Mrs. Stoddard. Oh, Dickie. Dickie, where is David? In his room? Yes. I think he's awfully excited from seeing his mother. Well, I think he's had enough excitement for one day. If it's all right with Mrs. Collins, I think it would be better to, to postpone her seeing him until tomorrow. He doesn't want to see me, does he? Oh, yes, he does want to see you. It's just that he's excited. Well, it's natural for the boy to be excited, Laura. He's been talking about you for years and hoping you'd come back. You don't have to be kind. Now, nobody's being kind, Laura. No, I know he doesn't want to see me. Well, that's ridiculous. Of course he does. No, he doesn't. He's... I think he's afraid. I could see it in his eyes. Well, this is utter nonsense. I'm going upstairs and have a little talk with David. He'll be down in ten seconds. Oh, no, Roger, don't do that, please. Why not? Well, because I think it was my fault. Your fault? Yes, I think I must have done something to frighten him. You've done nothing. No, I know I have. Perhaps I was I was just too eager or too anxious for his affection. He, he, he wasn't prepared. I, I'm a stranger to him now. Well, you won't be a stranger once David gets to know you. No. I want him to get to know me. I want him to feel close to me again. David means everything to me. I can feel you watching me, Mother. Stop it! Stop it! Laura, can we be perfectly honest with each other? I prefer it that way. Obviously, David needs time to adjust to you. I expected that. Well, so did we all, but it may be a bigger adjustment than any of us thought. Are you telling me I can't have him? No, I'm saying that we must all take time to see how David responds to you before any decisions are made. What this means is that we would like you to stay here with us. Here in Collinwood? Well, temporarily, and until David gets a chance to know you. You, you seem reluctant. Oh, no, no. It, I, I just need time to think about it. Does the house have such unhappy memories for you? Some. 
But it's really just that I'm... I'm so used to living alone. You're afraid you won't have enough privacy? Possibly. Well, I, I don't blame you for that. But on the other hand, living here, you'd get the best chance to know David. That's true. I know where Laura could have all the privacy she wanted. She could stay in Matthew's cottage. Matthew's cottage? Well, why not? It's fairly comfortable and no one's living there now. Well, I don't think Matthew's cottage would be entirely suitable for Laura. I think it's a splendid idea. I remember it and I think it's a charming place. Well, poor old Matthew wasn't the tidiest man in the world. You might find the cottage lost some of its charm. Oh, I'm sure good cleaning and airing would be fine. Well, you better look at it before you decide. It'll be fine. Carolyn? Yes, Mother? Come in here. I want you to say hello to somebody. Hello, Carolyn. Do you remember me? Yes, I think so. Aren't you? I'm Aunt Laura. I thought I recognized you. You haven't changed at all. <laughs> well, you have. The last time I saw you, you were 12 and wore braces. And you used to put plays on for us in the garage. Oh. <laughs> and you wore long, jangly earrings. I remember I loved those earrings. Well, I wish I still had them. I'd give them to you. They'd be very becoming right now. My, you've turned into a lovely girl, Carolyn. Thank you. Are you... Am I staying for a visit? Well, no, not quite. Laura's going to be staying on here with us for a while. In Matthew's cottage, if it's suitable. I see. Would you like to look at it tonight and then decide? Well, I'd love to look at it, but as far as I'm concerned, the decision's made. I'll get the keys. I'll take you down there, Aunt Laura. It'll give us a chance to talk. Fine. Laura. Everything's going to work out. I feel confident that it will. I hope so. All I want is to be close to David. Let me know if you think it's suitable. And I'll have Mrs. Johnson clean it out tomorrow morning, and you can move in tomorrow afternoon. You're very kind. Not at all. I think it's best that you be here. Well, I'll phone you first thing in the morning. No, are you leaving? Well, I think I should, as soon as I've seen the cottage. It's getting late. Oh, uh, have you made arrangements to get back into town? Well, yes, I told the taxi it brought me up to stop back in an hour and a half, so he should be here in 20 minutes or so. Well, if you want to cancel the taxi, I'll be glad to run you down. Oh, no, there's no need for that. Well, we'll be in touch. First thing in the morning. Good. I'm glad that we seem to be in agreement, Laura. Complete agreement. About everything. That's the way I want to keep it. So do I. Thank you again, Liz. Not at all. Shall we go? Okay. Good night. Good night. Goodbye, Laura. How does the house look to you? Well, it looks the same, and yet different. What do you think of her now? I must say I'm favorably impressed by Laura. So am I. I'm worried about David. I don't like the way he's behaving. Oh, he's just acting up that standard for David. Pay no attention to him. Well, I better go out and see how he is. Vicky, is David in his room? I think so. 